Hello, Dr. G here again. Most people don't know that we have 10 times more microorganisms that live on us and in us than we have cells in our body. Recent research shows that these organisms play an important role in many of our functions, including maintaining our weight, and it's also important for our mental health. Numerous studies show that overweight people tend to have a reduced diversity of species in their gut flora. Studies have actually shown that transplanting the gut flora from an overweight animal or human into a thin one can actually cause the thin animal to become overweight. Studies also show that a particular bacterial species has been associated with overweight people and obese people. Now, what can we do? What's practical about this new information? Well, one aspect of this is it seems that we want to have the most diverse flora possible. Now, how do we do this? Well, I can give you a list of simple things that you can do to improve your gut microbiome diversity today. Okay. Number one, and this is probably the most important in our modern culture, try to avoid taking antibiotics. Antibiotics wipe out the floor in our gut. Most of the time, people take antibiotics for viral illnesses or for bacterial illnesses that will resolve on their own. So they're absolutely unneeded most of the time. Antibiotics should be reserved for when they're really needed. Okay, number two, diet is also important. Many studies show that the processed food in the standard American diet lowers bacterial diversity in our gut. You see the trouble with processed foods such as refined grains, refined vegetable oils, refined dairy products, and added sugars is that they're quickly absorbed through our digestive tract. And guess what? Nothing's left over for our microbiome. So they die out because they have nothing to eat. Number three, another factor that's important is avoid pesticides, herbicides, and other toxic chemicals. Pesticides and herbicides were developed to kill life. So guess what? If you eat foods laden with these chemicals, you will be destroying your microbiome. A good example of this is glyphosate, which is the herbicide in the brand name, brand name Roundup. Genetically modified crops, especially soy and corn, are resistant to this herbicide. They were genetically altered that way. And so they're drenched in Roundup or something similar to control the growth of weeds. Glyphosate is used as a desiccant agent also on wheat crops. So unless you get organic wheat, it's going to contain high levels of this toxic chemical. Glyphosate was originally developed as a pesticide, so it's definitely good at killing living things, including your gut flora and eventually maybe you. My advice, don't use Roundup and eat organic so that you don't get any GMOs or any food that's been treated with toxic chemical pesticides or herbicides. Okay, number four, the next factor that you need is to feed your gut flora. Remember, processed foods aren't good because they're rapidly absorbed and nothing's left over for the gut flora. Prebiotics is the term for foods, and that includes certain animal proteins and fiber and plants that feed the gut flora because we can't digest them. Fiber is generally good, although I don't recommend that you start wheat bran because gluten and gliadin proteins in wheat tend to inflame the gut. Foods that are good for the gut bacteria include fiber-rich foods like acacia gum, onions, garlic, Jerusalem artichoke, leeks, raw asparagus, dandelion greens, jicama, and other vegetables. But guess what? Animal foods can also feed the gut bacteria, especially the poorly digestible parts, such as the tendons and cartilage 
and the shells of shellfish like shrimp. Yes, eat the shrimp shells. And when you bite into something, bite it once to make sure it's dead and then swallow it whole so that you have something left over for your gut microbiome. The next thing we can do to restore our bacteria that's missing because of a poor diet or taking antibiotics. One of the most invasive ways to do this to replace your gut flora is a fecal microbial transplant. Okay, here's how you do it. You pick out a person with a body you like, you know, that person with six pack abs that you admire. Then have them donate a fecal specimen that you can transplant into yourself. Actually, I'm just kidding. Uh, this might not be a bad idea, but fecal transplants are now only done for specific cases of, inf cases of infectious diarrhea, and it's not yet widely, widely available, but this could change soon. Probiotics are widely available. In certain cases, I recommend patients take probiotics through an enema delivered directly in the rectum. And this is because oral probiotics can be depleted by stomach acid, which is designed to kill bacteria. Now, if you want to do this procedure, the enema, consult your doctor first, please. Other ways to get live bacteria into your gut are to eat minimally washed organic vegetables. And this is to get the soil-based microorganisms or go out in the backyard and eat a little bit of dirt. Fermented foods are a good source of organisms, including sauerkraut, kimchi, tempeh, fermented garnishes, kombucha, fermented fish and meat, and fermented dairy products. Of course, you've heard of yogurt and kefir. Paying attention to gut flora species diversity and numbers will get you on the way to effortless weight loss. If your gut seems to be really messed up, like you can't get control of it, I would recommend finding a physician with experience in dealing holistically with gut problems. There is a functionalmedicine.org practitioner search guide on the internet. Our understanding of the gut microbiome and its effect on our health is only partly understood. And I believe it is actually a small part. Therefore, it's always important to think, would this happen in nature? There's been millions of years of our exposure to the environment on Earth, and it's sculpted how all of life works. So if we err on the side of Mother Nature, we will tend to do better. This is Dr. G. Thanks so much for watching.